All right, I got it recording. Welcome everyone. Thank you all for being here. I appreciate you volunteering and participating in this uh, project to build a roadmap. Uh, it's an honor to have all of you here. Thank you very much. I'm going to go through the roster real quick. Um, so we have here Dave, Jared, Chris Crawford, Chris Sweener, Dog, Daniel, Denny, Eistein, Jean Bricker, Graham Jones, Jonathan Fox, uh, Keefe, Kyle Solomon, Mamit Singh, Mercy, Nick Schreiber, Nicholas Aquaros, Ola Oman, Ritesh Kosai, Quasar, Shamba, Shweta Chuan, Stephen Aldrich, Tamar Hassan, Tiago, and Imad Saidov. Did I miss anybody? All right, looks like we got uh, everyone here who volunteered to participate. That's just how it goes, right? Okay, so uh, thanks for being here. And we're going to go over the general idea of the roadmap. I have some questions here. Uh, the main questions are, uh, what do we do with this roadmap now that we have this big giant brainstorm of inputs? And uh, how do we trim it down and abstract because it has a lot of detail and we want to save that detail. We want to retain it. Everyone is free to download the roadmap. It's openly available. You can download it, store a copy of it. I'm going to retain a copy of it. So we want to retain all these ideas. Uh, we need to abstract them and turn them into strategies. Uh, how do we prioritize them? How do we shift items to the right in a reasonable time frame? You'll see what I mean whenever we get to the roadmap part itself. How do we retain the, the revision history? That way we have some sort of, uh, we got to retain the history. I think that's important. And uh, what other tech platforms? Like we can't uh, just keep doing this on a Google spreadsheet on my G Google account. You know, that's not going to work. <laughs> so we'll figure that out. Oh, what platforms do we use for this project? And how do we manage expectations as in time, level of effort, and all those other things? And um, we have a lot of experts here people in finance, crypto, law, program managers, software engineers. So thank you all for being here. I think we have a really broad depth of expertise. Uh, so thanks everyone for volunteering for that as well. Are there any questions before I get started? I'm gonna to go to a screen share, but before we get going, what do, you, what do you got for me? Any questions? None for me. Oh, good, okay, thumbs up. All right, that looks like a thumbs up. I'll go ahead and share this screen, it might be Kind of hard to see, but we'll see how it goes. Okay, so here's the welcome tab on the roadmap. We have the questions in the roadmap. The welcome tab just links to the different parts of the roadmap. Here's the general roadmap here. And it starts with, uh, at the top, we have the CF mission statements. Let me see if I can make this bigger. I apologize, I should have done this earlier. A little better? Looks okay, good. Yeah. all right. So uh, here's the purpose, and these are just brainstormed ideas, establish goals and timelines, establish community expectations, provide guidance and transition activities to a DAO. And then the current CF mission is driving adoption of Cardano, shaping legislation, growing global uh, Cardano community, enduring stakeholder accountability and facilitating partnerships, which are listed over here on the left-hand column. Most of you have already reviewed this, so you're familiar with this because y'all have been putting the detail in, into this roadmap or people in this, uh, forum have been putting detail. So the mission is listed down the left hand side. Okay. And there was a couple other items of data added like the financial reporting support for Cardano certification programs, and the level of details added to that. All right. So there's the, the general idea of the roadmap, the general outline or sketch of the roadmap. Okay. Uh, so what are your thoughts so far? Anyone does anyone have comments on this slide? What do you think? Tell me what you think. Uh, I, I might go if you don't mind, Rick. Um, yes, please. So, Thank you. Tony. So, yeah. So I just wanted to first say, I mean, you guys really, truly have done a, a great job with this and all the categories there. <clears throat> I think you've captured a lot of what we need to capture and a lot of what the Cardona Foundation has also captured. So I want to take one step back and say, uh, Number one, I think the Cardona Foundation does need to come out and give you guys all an idea of sort of what its successes have been so far, uh, this year particularly, uh, because 
I think a lot of times you don't see what's going on in the background and a lot of really great stuff has been going on in the background. So I just wanted to be very clear about that. Um, and including after the PwC workshop. So one of the main outputs of the PwC workshop was to develop this very thing, a strategy for Cardano. I don't call it a strategy for the Cardano Foundation per se. That's almost a bit separate, right? The Cardano Foundation is one member of the entire community, but I, I call it the, the, the strategy for Cardano. And, and from the PwC workshop, that was one of the main things we were supposed to take away and we have taken away is we need to develop that strategy. And we needed to do it and need to do it in concert with you guys in, in the community. So you're kind of a step ahead of us, Rick, which is great. And I, I love this so much. Uh, what we were, we, we were planning, what we are planning is to hire a CEO um, at the Cardano Foundation. I, I read somebody's comment, I think it was you, Umed, uh, maybe in the Telegram channel, you're like, why the hell do we need to hire another person? We're just adding people on top of people. It could have been you, Umed, it could have been somebody else. But the, the main point is that at the Cardano Foundation, you need somebody to actually run the day-to-day -day operations of it, right? You need a CEO in place. Uh, we have Henrich, he's, a, he's an operations person and he's doing a fine job. Um, and then you have the council. Now the council is not supposed to be operational, right? We are supposed to be overseeing things like budgets and audits and honestly, some pretty boring stuff that a lot of very bureaucratic in nature. If you do want to look at the bureau bureaucracy of it all, that is where the council sort of sits. But the council is also supposed to develop the strategy again, in tandem with the CEO and with the community ultimately. So the problem that you guys, you know, you're a bit, um, you're about a month ahead of where we were going to get to and i'm with you rick i'm i'm also an impatient woman anybody that works with me knows that i'm like faster let's go let's get this going you know I, i'm the chief of staff for iohk and i'm constantly pushing us to move faster and it's really hard to to move at the pace that i think we all want us to move at but um part, part of the whole process was to hire a ceo and we hired somebody very particularly and it's good to see the community communique uh, going up that says that I can even actually announce that we are hiring a CEO. I think up to, up to date, you guys didn't even know that we were doing that. And Manmeet and Nico on this call can attest that we went through a very long, rigorous process to find the right CEO candidate. Now, the reason I personally, I'm speaking in my personal capacity here, guys, not on behalf of the council or, or anybody else. Um, the reason we hired the CEO was because he actually has expertise in doing strategy sessions uh, and design thinking sessions with fill in the blank. It could be this, like various stakeholders, it could be governments. And when, when we uh, sent him the offer, the first thing I said was, we should do a design thinking strategy session with the community. Um, and he was full, like all for it, fully on board. And that was going to be one of his first things he does because you see in the background, we also do have a strategy. Um, we have a consolidated strategy that all the council members uh, under the uh, under Henrich, actually, he put together a really nice framework uh, that we all worked on. We all inputted it, it's there and, and, it, and it's great. And then we also have these beautiful OKRs that we did uh, post PwC workshop. But again, these documents are just sitting there. They're wonderful, they're, they're great, and they complement what you guys are doing here very, very well. There's, there's tons of complementary uh, aspects of these things. But we were waiting for the CEO to come on board to do this actual exercise, this actual workshop with all of us, with the community, which to be honest, guys, I don't know how that was gonna work like with the entire community doing it. So I don't have the answer as to what the phases and stages of that workshop would look like. This, what you did here, Rick, with this community, uh, with the community input is probably was going to be one phase of it. And there's many others. I'm not a design workshop designer, thinker. I, I, I don't know how, he was going to structure it, but that is going to be released. So I kind of, I know I'm jumping ahead a little bit. I don't mean to just jump ahead and answer some of these questions, but what I'm trying to say is that that's going to be one method to come up with, okay, what do we do next? How do we prioritize? Who does what, right? Because it's great to have a roadmap, but it's also who owns it? How are we paying for this? What's the budget? Is the CF going to pay for it? What's the CF's budget? Uh, what are the priorities going to be? Or is the decentralized uh, funding mechanism once Voltaire's out, is it gonna pay for certain aspects of it? Now, these are the type of, types of things that we have to figure out as we go through this process. So what you guys have done is a roadmap, which is really great. In the way that I understand it, I mean, you could do it many ways, guys. You could have a mission, vision, values, my gosh. We need values as well. 
values is one thing that can really be that anchoring point for you as uh, when you're going through this process. Because if we, I love the value of integrity uh, and transparency and all of these things. But anyway, mission, vision, value, strategy. And like you said, Rick, these can be sub strategies in here and roadmap. So what I'm trying to say is there's, there's a couple of top pieces as well that this is missing. Uh, and it's not missing, we have it in the background. And that's gonna have to be part of this design workshop. Another thing I wanted to say, cause I talked to Dor, what day is it, Saturday, Friday. I talked to Dor on Friday, cause I wanted to get an idea of what idea scale is and what this whole fun one, fun two mechanism, what the platform is. And he mentioned to me, so we're all gonna go, we're gonna see what fun two is on Wednesday. I haven't seen it either. I don't know how exactly it works. I've seen a couple of the proposals, but he did propose that maybe we could run this through idea scale as well. And there's different ways to collaborate an idea scale. You can vote on certain things like the council could come in, for example, and say, hey, we could, uh, you know, uh, he, there's a whole bunch of, of ways to, to use idea scale. There's a meritocratic sort of thumbs up, thumbs down uh, system in there. So I, I'm also would like, because this is going to be recorded and we're going to have minutes, I'd like to put that on as maybe one mechanism of finalizing the roadmap itself. Um, I also saw the question is the, like, how are we going to ratify it? Is the council, the, the big, the big council up there. And there's only five of us guys. Uh, the council can be up to seven people. There's five of us right now. Are we the ones that are going to just at the end of the day, put a check mark and say, yes, we're going to do this or no, we're not going to do this. Or this is the budget. The answer is, I don't know. I don't know if that's ultimately going to be how this is going to go. But like I had just said, it's going to be some sort of mishmash of a process that we just described there with the design thinking workshop and you guys. Um, so yeah, I, that's just sort of, I just wanted to orient and, and, and contextualize a little bit for you guys um, to make sure that you know that there is a bunch of stuff going on in the background. Um, and, and that's sort of where we're at. And I will also say that I do think the Cardona Foundation does need to get better at communicating uh, what we're doing. Uh, it's like a, it's like anything, if you don't communicate, you know, you just don't know that it's happening, right? So I'm also going to commit to communicating more on behalf of the Cardano Foundation and uh, also on behalf of IOHK. I'm chief of staff. I know what's going on. Uh, the more information you guys have, the better. And information is power. And I don't believe information should be uh, held back. I think information should be shared freely. Um, so yes, I, I'm going to commit to also helping with that, but I'm going to stop there. And uh, I just wanted to say that little piece and I will turn the floor back over to you guys. Thank you, Tamar, I appreciate it, I appreciate it. Yeah, getting some transparency out there will be a good thing. Uh, there's a little bit of lack of information kind of stuff like that, but thank you, thank you very much. Um, so we have uh, some questions here. Can you guys see that okay? I can see it, can you guys see okay. it? Okay, all right, Tamar, so, uh, you touched on something very important. Idea scale is one example. And we have some questions on here in general. We're not going to like drill the details of the roadmap and try to modify it right now, you know, like on live action video stream. But how do we trim down and abstract the information that we have? How do we prioritize it? How do we vote? Okay. And what other tech platforms are best for this project? Uh, you kind of touched on those four points with bringing up things like idea scale and collaborative tools. Can, can you provide any insight on idea scale and how it would answer this? And the reason I ask is because, um, well, first of all, tomorrow, we've got 600 people, over 600 people in that Telegram channel. So you got 600 people back in yeah. you, okay? All right, so you, you, you've got backup here. We got you, okay? Uh, and, and I'm so glad you came on here. I appreciate your bravery and leadership and you're awesome. You're just the best. Okay. So you got people backing you. You got okay. over 20 people right here in the forum already, you know, uh, for this. And yeah. what we're asking here at this point is what uh, technologies, tools, and procedures do we have out there in order to manage all of this brainstorming input? Because right now it's just a brainstorming input phase where we're collecting all this community information and input. Yeah. And uh, there's a lot of different technologies came up like Trello, um, Jira, IdeaScale, all, and a lot of different things. Asara was thrown out there. Asana. And I don't, Asana. Wow. And yeah. Asana. Okay, Asana. <laughs> so and tools, I, I just wanna say tools are a very, 
personal thing. Uh, you know, like if you ask me, I'd be like, don't use Jira. I don't love Jira, but a lot of people love Jira. It's just the way that it is. So you're going to have to do an analysis on what works best. You have to look at the long-term goal. Like what are we ultimately trying to achieve as a community, right? And, and in, this, in, this, in this process, and is this tool correct for that process? Like if it's a long-term thing and we want to use uh, Jira long-term to track tasks and, and uh, I mean, as Kanban boards, it's, it's got so many different features then you choose uh, Jira, but both companies can attest to this, IOHK and, uh, and, uh, and CF, and I'm sure you guys in the Mergo Deco can also attest to this. You actually have to go through the analysis. You have to go through the process and say, okay, these are our criteria. This is why we want to use this tool. This is what we're trying to achieve. And then you do an, anal an analysis and you take a template and you compare them. So I can't answer that. I love Trello. Trello I use just for my own personal board, but Jira probably makes more sense long term. And like I said before, you know, the foundation can run an instance of Jira because it's a foundation for free. And there's lots of stuff. Nick, Nicholas, I, I'd also like you to comment on this too, because you know a lot about tools. Um, like GitLab is another one. IdeaScale is another one. I'm going to talk to them on Monday with Dor and see about how we could integrate this process uh, into idea scale. But again, it's just an option. Whenever I say anything, guys, it's just, uh, it's just an option. It's just, it's not like we should absolutely do this. I think everyone got caught on the holacracy thing as well. Like we should absolutely do this. No, I mean, actually holacracy has uh, its own misgivings. Um, it actually incentivizes behaviors that you don't necessarily want to incentivize, but there are pieces of it that we could take from. But again, a proper analysis analyses needs to be done and then you're going to say well who does this analysis and what are, are you going to do it am i going to do it I, I mean you'd eventually just we have to assign owners of this um to conduct these types of analysis and again that's something i can't weigh in and say how we're exactly going to do that but we should be analyzing these tools and figuring out what is best for the ecosystem our guy rob cohen did a bit of it background after pwc he looked at a bunch of infrastructure we could use at this the cardano foundation to run an open source ecosystem now keep in mind this is an open source ecosystem you got to use tools that are open source uh, that can expand and contract and that have you know easy and open apis and so forth um, i think you'd build it right the first time right and you do a proper infrastructural diagram and we make sure that we know exactly what we're building before we build it. Because once you get into a tool, as you guys noticed, you're kind of stuck with it. Uh, you know, it's really hard to migrate away from a tool. Like now we're all in one Discord and I'm like, oh, there's another Discord over there. I mean, that, that's another example. It's not hard to move people, but it, you know, you got to choose the right tools up front. So we should find and put a lead on it, uh, a couple of leads maybe, and, and make sure that we're using the right tools uh, for the process. Anybody else want to weigh in on that, Nico? Or uh, I know you deal a lot with infrastructural tools and software. Uh, yeah, my, uh, my two grains of salt on this is that uh, there could be like a huge debate about which one is the right tool. So we move from like, what is the roadmap that the community could be like uh, proposing to what is the best tool to work on the roadmap. And then this could take like so much time. So my only advice would be like, just to use something that uh, even if it's not perfect, I could continue to keep things moving. And later on in the future, if things are going well, it could be upgraded to a, like a better tool. But uh, my suggestion would be like to try to keep rolling so uh, this team from the community doesn't get lost because there is like so much about talking about tools that could like turn off a lot of people that have ideas, but they are not so much about tools. All right, thank you. Um, uh, go ahead. Uh, hi. Um, so I've been thinking, well, uh, aren't we talking about two different, two, two things here? Um, for once, we need uh, something to, uh, a tool which will allow us to kind of like manage uh, uh, and, and track changes to the roadmap and another tool that will allow us to track the progress um, we make uh, as, you know, as, as we go down the roadmap, right? So, um, the, the trail board, yeah, it, I, I like it personally um, uh, for, for, for tracking of the progress, but then uh, for, for tracking changes to the roadmap and as the roadmap um, evolves, um, I don't know, maybe uh, um, GitHub and, and some UI on, on GitHub pages or, or something like, like that or similar solution on, on GitLab. 
um, could do that. Um, yeah, just just my couple of bits. Um, uh, yeah, yeah thanks. Uh, uh, just to like try to help to the, move in this, like if we start talking about tools right now, I don't think it's going to be like the best use of our time. I think like probably that could be like done in the forums or something like that. But we're like a lot of people, I think like we should try to talk more about like the roadmap. And something that I would like to propose is that for example, for driving adoption of Cardano, uh, right now it's like a huge chunk and we should divide it in personas. What do this mean? That driving adoption of Cardano could mean like developers, startups, holders, enterprises. So it would be good that uh, we like define uh, and uh, what we care because uh, what could happen is that maybe you have like 20 tasks, but all those 20 tasks maybe are related to like, I don't know, holders and startups, but we don't have anything for entrepreneurs. We don't have anything for enterprises. So if we put like a framework of like the general thing that could be like more concrete of what we care about like a community, uh, it could be like easier to see what things we're missing, what things we have too much. And then also from that, we could like uh, put like some key metrics, for example, for developers, how many developers we want in a year. Uh, because right now, just saying like driving adoption of Cardano is like difficult to quantify because what do that mean? But if we split it in like this type of personas, which I would like, uh, suggest uh, that we have holders, first one, second one, developers, third one, startups, which is different than developers, uh, users, because for example, uh, if you have a startup, you also want holders to use it. And that's like a different conversion because are people just going to hold and other people are actually going to be users of dApps in the Cardano ecosystem and for last enterprises. So uh, that's my two grains of salt. I don't know what you guys think. Thank you for that, Nico. I appreciate it. And I think you're right in the, for the sake of time and the purpose of this conversation, um, we don't want to drill the details right now, but I think you and Tamara have done a great job in helping answer some of these questions. How do we trim down and distract and so on? Um, one thing I want to make sure is that people don't get wrapped around uh, these tools or that they get buried in these strange and esoteric tools that are unique to a community like GitHub. Because right now we have a, a huge uh, spectrum of backgrounds, right? like there's program managers here, developers here. Uh, regular community members. So I don't want them to get buried in some weird software app. Uh, I, my suggestion is wh whatever we use to move forward is it's highly collaborative, it's highly trackable, and it's easy to use so that there's a there's not a steep learning curve, right? We don't want some super advanced tool that only a software developer can use. Otherwise, we'll lose the inputs of all these other people who have a lot of valuable information to add. So I think that's the key point. Is everyone okay with that? And then we'll move on. We good? Absolutely. Yeah. Sounds good. Okay. Any that's objections? Good. I agree with that. All right. It's got to be simple. I'll, Kiss. Ricky, how are this? Yeah. Sorry. I would just like to say something real quick. Um, because like this first question, uh, in my opinion, is sort of like the most important thing because we have like this huge and, and nice, you know, roadmap. But like if we don't, set uh maybe not today but today we can start getting ideas how do we trim down like we we can't expect to like the 600 people in the chat to be working at the same time on this so do we like to get um set a set of people that are going to be looking after these like each of these categories and then report back to the community or like is that today like the day we're going to actually find the process of trimming down and getting from the roadmap what now that's really what we're going to work on and because i just feel like if we uh keep these you know these broad we're gonna you know uh get a problem of not getting things done so uh i think we should try to focus today like in, in how do we really you know trim down and focus and, and what's really important uh, moving forward great point gene does anyone want to take that up who wants to take up uh how do, what tools should we be using? And then we can right. move on. Hey, Rick, this is Manmeet. Me. Um, all right, so the tools should follow what the sort of uh, strategy or the methodology that we're going to adopt to 
quote unquote finalize this roadmap and have a, a working uh, a workable document, right? Uh, ultimately, you don't want to be in a situation where the tool is actually influencing and deciding how the roadmap gets gets settled and finalized. So one of the issues that we have here is we've got tremendous amount of great ideas. I actually think the answer to how to trim down and abstract comes from the answer to how to prioritize. If I just take a step back uh, and look at the underlying issue for this entire exercise is a, shall we say, a perceived lack of um, success or a perceived lack of um, development or work being. To overcome that, we ultimately need to show some uh, successful actions, right? You need to show that, hey, things are moving forward and they're moving forward in, you know, here's example, one, two, three, four, five, whatever it is. So that prioritization actually gives us a set of actionable items, uh, targets, goals, whatever have you, that have to be achieved within a specific time frame, right? So a lot of the prioritization should go, a lot of the effort should possibly go towards the lower hanging fruit, towards the um, the activities that we can undertake that can yield some visible, measurable result uh, fairly early or in the shorter time frames, which should go, you know, I hopefully that should go, depending on what those targets are naturally, but hopefully that should go to uh, to a large extent to start making uh, the community feel a little better that yes, uh, things are moving the way we've we wanted them to, the way we, we like, or the way we're foreseeing. So I really think prioritization should is, in my mind, more important or that will help us to figure out how we trim down. We take the highest priority items that uh, can ideally be achieved a little faster. We try and focus on those and get those out of the way. That builds confidence, that builds uh, trust in the system, that builds a certain sense of achievement within the community. And then we take that, and not to say that, not to say that things only happen in uh, in a sequential format, but the bulk of effort, energy, whatever it might be, towards early wins, then you know mid stage, and then later stage wins, and that now gives us a sense of how we prioritize. What can we do quickly and get done? So, you know, Nico's mentioning a very very good point in terms of the personas uh, around adoption. Now, this is something that. Um, we've all uh, discussed extensively. So a lot of that is, is, is coming uh, you know, from those discussions, obviously, Nico's own um, brilliant mind on it. But adoption has a time frame where there are so many dependencies, so much that you have to get done that is not entirely under your control that I think once, uh, so let's say enterprise adoption, right? You know, the amount of work and effort that the entire industry is doing, pushing for enterprise adoption, I don't think a lot of folks, not a lot of folks have a intimate sense of the amount of work and effort that's going into that, right? And I'm talking about the entire industry. I'm not saying anything specific to, to us or anything, uh, but it just takes time corporations and here, you know, now we talk about enterprise adoption. So which enterprise are we talking about? Small scale enterprises, we're talking about medium, are we talking about fortune 500, fortune 100, fortune 1000, whatever it is. Uh, if you look at the larger enterprises, they're behemoths, they're slow moving behemoths, right? So it takes very long time to get these things done. So therefore, even within something like adoption, which persona is a quick hit that we can get some results quick, let's get those out of the way. Uh, which ones are longer term, which gives us a little more time to also think and plan and strategize over and see whom all in the community can actually help uh, accelerate the achievement of that particular target and goal and so on and so forth. Uh, and then once we have some, I, I think once we have something like that, you know, sort of uh, timeline-wise prioritized uh, roadmap, 
uh, then it would become even more important to figure out what are the best tools at that point to sort of divvy up some of that work. And I don't know if the best way um, to take those tasks forward is to divvy up. The challenge with having an open community uh, plan and structure and discussion and, and, and sort of actionable plan moving forward is when you have to make certain decisions, somebody's not going to be happy. Take whatever model you wish to take to make those decisions, somebody is going to be displeased. And that's just the, uh, the nature of, you know, decision making around things. And uh, you can't, you cannot please everybody. But to what extent is the community, what's the, what's that, you know, sense or finger on the pulse of the community? To what extent are we willing to go through those steps? Because right now the community is saying, hey, the guys have been, we believe are the ones who will be doing stuff and so on, aren't doing stuff or whatever, and then they're, they're displeased. Okay, let's take that. At some point, you have a community effort and now you're gonna to have to make certain decisions and certain compromises and certain trade-offs. And some folks somewhere, somehow are gonna to need to take these individual elements of this strategy and sort of help figure out, move it forward, et cetera, et cetera. Some would want to be involved, some would not want to be involved, so on and so forth. Now, this is where you get into the more, I think, tougher territory of ensuring that the momentum is not lost and that you move forward. And I think that's then where the tools will become much more critical. So for which quote unquote team or which piece of the strategy, which tool works best should be decided, I think, around that time. After that pruning of this roadmap uh, and timeline structure is put around it. Yeah, um, if, I, if I could add to this, Manmeet, um, you actually um, raised a really good issue here that you know priority basically drives the abstractions and, and, and trimming down. But I think uh, one level above that, if we, if we have a budget, uh, because we have finite resources at every you know uh, step of the way, uh, we could basically uh, um, you know take it, make it more distilled in that respect. Um, the reason I'm saying this is that, you know, we have a laundry list of things here and, and, and I, I'm reading all of them. I, I, I'm really excited about every single one of them. But then you have to also face the reality of, you know, how much budget do we have? For, for, for instance, for September, for October, for November, et cetera. And, uh, and then we have to sort of prioritize within a month or a quarter or, 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 a, or a year for that matter, um, which projects make the most sense. And as you mentioned, you know, the lower hanging fruits, I'm, I'm completely on board on that. Um, and the second issue I, I would like to raise is, is to understand who is, I mean, there's, there's a lot of people talking about, you know, what we need to do, but uh, I, don't, I don't have a sense of, of like, who's going to do all this stuff and uh, how much it's going to cost. I want to jump in there, actually, yes. um, because a lot of this stuff is already being done. A lot of this stuff is already being done. So I want to first go back to the personas. Personas, absolutely. Nico nailed it. We talk about personas all the time. SPOs, you guys are a persona, right? You're a particular kind of community member. Developers are a persona. Enterprise, uh, enterprises are a persona. At IOHK right now, for example, our priorities are, of course, number one, state pool operators. You guys are front lines. You know, we, we need to make your environment, we need to make sure you guys have everything you possibly could need to be successful as stake pool operators. Uh, number two, our priority, developers. Go gets coming out. So right now we have dedicated resources at IOHK. I told you guys this already. I hired a marketing director and she's focused solely on Gogan, developer, you know, anything to do with developer experience. So is Miriam at the CF. And then number three, enterprise, really. We got to get this part done first, guys, and then you can focus on enterprise. But there's so much enterprise stuff going on right now. There's cross-pollination of research between the Cardano Foundation, Amergo, and IOHK, and elsewhere, and so forth. And that's really happening. But if you look at these things on the list, I'm just going to really quickly go through this. I don't know if it's going to be useful or not. I just want to highlight that the, what things are going on right now. Marketing, we all know marketing's happening, guys. We didn't have a marketing person at the Cardano Foundation until, what was it, uh, two months ago, I think, Miriam started. She's done a hell of a job hitting the ground running. Uh, we did the rebrand. Is it spectacular? We all have a subjective opinion about that. 
but it's there, right? It's a good version one and we could expand upon it, but we need to expand on marketing. IOHK is also expanding our marketing efforts as well. Uh, women involvement, I love and we're doing it and Shruti, um, I'm working with everybody to, to make sure that this is already happening. It's already happening, guys. Like it's exploding already and um, hardware integration, that's already happening, software integration. Um, Market, scaling, so BASHA, that's one thing that we're still working on at IOHK, but eventually that is gonna have to be funded by a decentralized, in a decentralized way after Voltaire, but it is happening. And what I'm trying to say is the research is ongoing. Hydra and BASHA research is ongoing already. Governance and voting, Voltaire is moving guys. It's moving really, really fast. Uh, Dora's team is break, it, like it, it's move fast and break things and work with the community and get this out. He told me he'd have a roadmap, guys, for Voltaire. I don't want to commit him to this date, but mid October, okay, don't, don't kill me if that's not the date. But also, we need to be a bit flexible in the dates. The guys are moving quickly, guys and gals on that team are moving quickly. RFP, we have two RFPs now. Um, since I joined, that's one thing I really wanted to push was the RFP process critical Cardano infrastructure. We need to actually, the part of the Cardano Foundation's job is to fund some critical Cardano uh, infrastructure. It's happening. Two RFPs already went out. Nico, integral to that process. Can we refine our process? Absolutely. We do need to hire somebody that just focuses on RFP processes for, for the CF, but we have it already. Jeremy's overseeing it. He's doing an excellent job. Exchanges, guys, <laughs> we are... <laughs> doing everything we possibly do with exchanges on IOHK side and the Cardano Foundation side. Like there could not be more that we could be doing. I mean, there's always more we could be, be doing, but we are supporting our exchanges. There's a lot of backend stuff. We have an Adrestia team that is making exchange relationships and exchange backend stuff a lot easier for these exchanges. Development conferences, well, COVID. So woohoo, thank God we don't have to look at that right now, at least. There's virtual conferences we could attend. Uh, grants as well, I've, I just mentioned RFPs, and which is grants, uh, web presence. Yeah, we need to fix that a little bit, but we have a new cardanafoundation.org website. And I just heard from our marketing team yesterday that we're working on a re, uh, like a different architecture for the website as well. So that, that's ongoing. Strategic partnerships are constantly happening. We're constantly doing those. And I really like not me, but Henrich, or somebody at the CF to tell you guys what, uh, Rick, you should read out, reach out to Henrich if you don't mind, and he can give you a list of all the strategic partnerships that the CF has um, um, tomorrow, forged. Tomorrow, what yeah. might be better than me reaching out would be, is everything you just said, if yeah. they post a status board on cool. the Cardano Foundation, if they put a status yeah. board, you sure. won't have all these crazy miscellaneous communications like, hey, what's the status? What's going on? What's going on? Totally. All, it'll, it'll already be there. So yeah. there are some things the Cardano Foundation is not doing well, and that is communicating I everything totally you agree. said. I agree. They are not, they're not putting a status out, um, yeah. and they are not managing expectations. So those Absolutely. need to be looked at. Okay, so uh, have a, you. you know. That would go a long that. way, hey? Yeah, yeah. okay. I'm sorry, I, I, I didn't mean to interrupt, please. Sir, no, I'm not going to keep going down the laundry list either, but I could. I could just go through everything <clears throat> and say, hey, guys, we've got this for this or this for this. Well, but um, but what well, I want to try to say is oh, a lot sorry. of this stuff is happening. Yeah, go ahead, Rick. Yeah. Well, well, now, at least now we know how much horsepower you have. In addition, it yeah, sounds to me power. what you're saying is the Cardano Foundation is short-staffed. You can't get everything done that the community is expecting you to get done because if you yeah. look at this roadmap, okay, look what people did. Um, I know. Well, we can do this picture, together. Let me, let me look at the big yeah. picture. Let me look at the big picture, okay? I'm not going to drill yeah. the details, okay? okay? All right. People put their inputs, and they are all way over here in September, October, November. They put yeah. them all to the left, and that's why I had that bullet point. And yeah. over here to the right, it's blank. Okay, and this is a good indication that the what you can get done, what the what the Cardano Foundation and the the three major groups as a whole can mm -hmm. get done, as opposed to what people expect to get done, doesn't match. And also based on the fact that there's uh, 600 people in that Telegram channel and 20 people dialed in, at least 20 mm -hmm. dialed in here, that's an mm -hmm. indication that people are willing to support. I know, and that's the coolest not part. Not just the ambassador we, program. I'm not talking I, about the ambassador program. I know, program. everybody, exactly. We, I'm not just saying this. You guys are so smart. I mean, we have the smart, we're colleagues, all of us, right? Like, I just work for IOHK, but we, we all of us can, you know, divide and conquer. That's why I keep saying, let's divide and <clears> conquer. And that's why I like this process, because we can see where we have gaps and then say, 
you know, this is where the community can fill fill the gaps, you know, here here or there, um, and, and so forth. So, um, yeah, I mean, I even saw education. There is stuff going. Uh, so, understaffed. I, I want to talk about understaffed for a second, if you don't mind. I, I don't know. I just I need to say it because, you know, IOHK. How many people do we have now? Two hundred and fifty people. It's crazy. It's so hard to manage sometimes, but that's how many people we have, and that's not even a lot, right? There's companies with tens and thousands, tens of thousands of people. But we're constantly even just trying to catch up when it comes to hiring. It's like, God, we got to hire this person. We gotta hire. It, it takes some time to hire. It takes some high time to integrate these people uh, into, the, into the process. But the Cardano Foundation, I do agree, does need to hire. I've been saying it since I joined a technical person, a CTO or a director of engineering. That person needs to join the Hyperledger project. I don't know if we joined it or not at the CF. IOHK is a member. Uh, the CF is supposed to be a member as well, and that person is supposed to be a counterbalance to IOHK. We are not the be-all and the end-all of things, right? We have technical vision for Cardano, but at the end of the day, we need this Cardano Foundation and a CTO and an open source-minded CTO to look at a, a, you know, our technical roadmap and look at the future technical roadmap and say, hey, that's not going to work, or let's go this way, or let's go that way. And we need to find a heavy-hitting person. I already talked to Brian from the Hyperledger Project and asked maybe just, and if anybody's watching this, if you, you know, you should apply. That role should be online soon, and you should apply for that role. Nico's been working really Really hard to hire more technical people. Uh, we need to hire a product person on the CF side as well. And uh, there's some key hires, yes, that they still need to hire, Rick. I, I absolutely agree. And a couple of other people have just come online. Um, so yes, uh, it, it, we need to hire a little bit faster. I agree. But again, you're talking to an impatient woman. So I, I like everything to happen last night, yesterday. But uh, and, 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 you know, it just takes time. So I, I'm going to talk, stop talking there, but I just wanted to, to point out that there is a hiring plan, there is a recruitment plan, and totally, Rick, we can all, you know, do and work on a piece of this that maybe the CF or uh, Cardano Foundation or Emergo is not working on. We can fill those gaps. Yes, thank you very much. Sorry, sorry. Can I sorry to just jump in uh, very, very quickly um, to come back to this roadmap. For me personally, right, as an individual, uh, the most um, important part of this roadmap is that this is, to me, a living voice of the community and what expectations they have out of this. So to the extent that this roadmap can continue to be uh, refined and pruned and prioritized by the community, to me, that, that you know, just adds value to it because whatever comes at the end of it, and the community says, all right, guys, uh, here you go. This is what we want to focus on in the next uh, 12 months, uh, next 24 months, next 60 months, whatever it is, right? Here's how we've broken it down and we've gone through our community processes uh, to reach these decisions. Then superlay that uh, or overlay that with what, uh, we within you know the three organizations or the CF, however we want to do it, uh, have been doing, are doing, uh, and take off the items where there is complete concurrence and action, action moving forward, and everybody's happy. The community feels, yeah, okay, cool, that's fine. I see that it's happening, it's working. Let's knock this out. We're 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 good, right? And then start focusing on the items that either aren't happening or not happening at the pace or quality or whatever, wherever there is some, uh, some issues, some, some discontent or whatever have you, uh, and then really try and focus on those and get, then we can start drilling down deeper into, okay, uh, community wants this to happen, fair. Uh, let's say, you know, the CF has put some effort into it, but hasn't been as um, successful or moved as, as fast or as, as far ahead as the community would have wanted. Then let's understand where and what those reasons or gaps are, right? Why did it happen? Uh, is there a logical, rational explanation of why something didn't happen? Again, the easiest example just to prove a point would be things like enterprise adoption, right? Uh, lots of stuff happening, but it's just not gonna move as fast as people wish, unless somebody in the community knows the CEO or the chairperson or a board member of a Fortune 500 company and they can get you know Uncle Bob or Auntie Tammy to approve a proposal, then we're all in, right? We'll, we'll go in 
completely and try and do those those sorts of projects, but it just has a certain process yeah. that takes time, right? So that, that yeah, dictating product market fits look. not helpful. Yeah, look, I mean, um, you know, we, we are uh, in in different stages, all three organizations. In each one of us uh, from the council on this call right now, all three of us have been involved in this extensively. So I'm just talking about our own, or at least my personal experience on this. Um, and I would be super surprised if there's a vastly different uh, view coming out from anybody who knows what we're talking about in this particular, in this particular uh, segment, right? Um, so, so I think let's, can we, you know, sort of look at getting to the point where we can really distill that community voice and bring it down to, all right, mate, here you go, this document, these action items, these issues, these timelines, this is our priority list. Let's go. That, that is finally the single most important bit. And from my side, I'm happy to sort of help in thinking through things. Uh, but I think it should be less so, from my side at least, it should be less so, um, you know, driving a specific point versus another point. Because that brings us back to, you know, stuff that we are doing anyhow um, it, within the uh, IOHK, CF, and Morago uh, organization, right? Uh, um, can I say yeah, something? I'll leave it at that. Yes, thank you. Go ahead, no central authority. I see you got your hand raised. Um, I think what should we get out of this meeting is either, either one of the two organizations needs to step in and give this community a tool that we can work with. And um, the gentleman before me said that, yeah, the tool is not so important at this point. We should start with something small, but then give us a tool, no matter what tool it is, whatever we agree on, and start with something small so we can first go through the process of, of working on the roadmap with the small tasks. And then in this way, the community will know, okay, so this is how you achieve something to, to be put on the roadmap and then take it from there and then let it grow. And, and then we can go into adoption and enterprise and all these things. These things are not uh, achievable at this point with those, we don't have the tool to collaborate. So I think the most important thing from this meeting is to come up today with a tool where we can capture this momentum of, of everyone and start uh, with something small. I think that's, that's my two cents. So, so shouldn't it be about who is doing what by when, right? And then the how is the tool. Because I, so for example, I work for a, um, I'm working on a blockchain working group and there's like a hundred people on these calls. There's so many things we want to talk about. We need to split it out. Who's taking the marketing sub working group? Who's taking the women involvement and so forth? Come back and bring it together. Each of those groups might use Jira or Asana or Google or whatever, but ultimately bringing back to a central if this Google Sheet, it seems fine, right, for capturing those ideas. But we can't have even 40 people or 600 in the Telegram all weighing on the same thing. And I think, you know, I like regulatory. I might not want to use some super technical tool, whereas the developer um, vertical might want to use some other thing. So I think the tool is a little bit later, I think, as some of the others had said. But, um, yeah, that's my two cents. This is, this is what I wanted to uh, 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 just quickly to, uh, uh, um, uh, um, touch on. Um, if um, we have this roadmap and we know that uh, uh, the, the, the Cardano Foundation is already working on things and IOHK um, is working on things as well and community wants to contribute. And so we need to know the capabilities of uh, members within the community and who is uh, willing to contribute their time um, um, towards you know given task, myself as a UI developer, you know let's let's have developers uh, 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 chat about how we can contribute it um, uh, as developers, and, um, and and same goes for other you know as you know the personas um, that you know we can uh, not only uh, uh, um, draft um, the roadmap. Um, but also contribute, uh, you know, the, the, to, to this roadmap uh, in a way that is, is tangible. Um, so, 
So we, we kind of need some sort of um, uh, way to do that. Maybe Telegram is a good tool to kind of like, um, uh, 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 you know, as you said, Dave, uh, to, to, to and, and kind of start uh, 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 working on certain you know parts of the roadmap and and try to kind of uh, uh, sync uh, with um, some uh, you know parts of the roadmap that are related like cross um, uh, 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 sort of team uh, that's just just my thought that I, I think that we need to have like uh, some sort of personal commitments from the community uh, who wants who really wants to contribute to get things done. If there are Can things, I? as we say, that uh, uh, that the IOHK uh, or uh, foundation is understaffed, uh, that you know the community can contribute, then maybe you know we, we, we need that. We need to do that too. I want to add something to this. I believe that once we have the tool, then the talent will naturally gravitate towards the the the, the task. So if we are tackling some task and it's out there in public where people can collaborate on that, whoever is, is familiar with that topic and that matter will naturally go and start working on that. And then you will know who's capable of doing what once you have it laid out in some form or other than a, 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 an Excel sheet. Uh, that's, that's Yeah, we have no shortage of eager talent. Yeah, I'm really glad you guys raised that as well. Um, like even in IOHK, for us, uh, sometimes we forget what some of our devs, that, I mean, some devs are just, they're not all Haskell developers, right? They've got a whole rat, like suite of other skill sets. So we use Namely. It's just, I'm not suggesting we use Namely here. It's, it's an HR tool. Um, just understand people's skill sets. That, that's actually the only reason I re also recommended Glass Frog as well, because you can see people's uh, roles and responsibilities. And I do believe you can see people's profiles, like what, what their skills are. Uh, but I think in the, in the future, and again, I don't know what tool to use or, or how to do that, but you're absolutely right. We do need to figure that out. And I think after people see this video, right, it's just us here and now, but I think once people see this video, people at IOHK, other people in the community, the CF, anybody, they're going to have some other suggestions for us as well. And again, I don't know idea scale very well. I'm speaking to those folks on Monday, but maybe they have a system where you can actually, you know, show what your talents are, what your skill, skill set is um, in order to participate on a project. Again, I don't know idea scale very well, but that's a very good point. I'm glad whoever mentioned that, mentioned that. I I think it's super important that we um, understand who can do what. Yeah, so uh, what about we? Uh, sorry, I just wanted to add that, you know, uh, uh, contributions um, are one thing, but then uh, obviously there is, uh, there are some funds right there are there is some um, uh, budget for to do certain things so i know yes. that you know uh, uh, many of us would like to contribute but then we also need to know where this uh, 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 contribution uh, would have some kind of uh, um, 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 compensation you know dimension totally what, i'm uh, also would, a big believer in getting getting paid to do work. I'm, I'm a proper capitalist in that way. I think everybody should, I mean, we should, should all contribute, you know, where that's the open source ethos, but I, I agree with you. I mean, finding ways to get paid as well for even just like a micro sort of input, right? Um, this is something I was talking to Charles about back in the day. Um, yeah, I, I don't know how to solve that problem yet too, but, um, or how the DAO like structure once we have Voltaire, how it's going to solve that structure as well. But I mean, I assume that there's going to be some sort of easy way or payment or micropayment via, via ADA, of course, right, uh, would make the most sense for all of our contributions. I was also talking to Nougat. Uh, those guys have an open source ecosystem as well where devs contribute and bounties and all that. But, but I absolutely agree. I know there's the ambassador, ambassador program. It has the four tiers and uh, you get paid based on, you know, whatever your contributions are. But I feel like that's where we should move, period, as a society <laughs> and, and, and as an open collaborative community is to getting paid for your work. But then how do you how do you quantify that payment, right? How do you quantify that work? That's a really fun thing to solve, too, that our HR team <laughs> at IOHK is trying. We try to solve that all the time, right? It's like, how do you... How do you really quantify, I mean, do you, do you take into cost of living? Like, I don't know where you live, but do, do you get paid based on your cost of living index as well? And, and, and what, is, what is performance and how do you measure performance? And it's a really cool one to solve. No one's solved it yet, but I think we should solve that. Um, and, and that's a big well, one, for, and, and for, I do agree, yeah. 
one more. And, and I know you're talking about larger like, projects as well. You're talking about larger yeah. projects too. Once Voltaire is out. I think we should. Well, um, the devs like myself, it's a bit easier. Uh, in the sense that you know uh, um, you, you commit your code and the code is quite transparent that everyone can see the contribution and evaluate it in in sort of even almost algorithmic way so but and I understand that many many others um, uh, yeah, yeah it's, it's much more tricky than that um, yeah. uh, sorry let's, sorry to interrupt last time if possible um, let's start the process find the tool start with things that don't require funds Go through the process, educate the community, and when we get stuck for funds, then we'll cross that bridge when we get there. But oh, for first, sure, yeah, it's a longer-term thing. Yeah. We'll first, we need the process and the tool so we can capture the talent and the momentum, and then work with that. And everything from that point is 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 debatable, and 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 you can we can just change it as we go. One of the things I want to actually question is the the roadmap format. Um, is that truly the actual format that we should focus on? <laughs> um, because every time that I've actually uh, developed the seconds we are, I'm talking to people. Okay, I'll take care of it in a second. Um, sorry about that. The, the main thing that's like, whenever I've actually built companies and you know, done things, you don't start out with the roadmap. Um, the, you start out with the actual priority list and then you will let the the, uh, the assets you have, the resources you have, dictate what the actual roadmap is. Um, here, because the, the think this is actually a, a priority list is actually the, where we should actually aim for because you know, the, the CF is not the only buddy that would actually be working on it. The way I would look at it is that I, okay, I'll get you, I'll get you a cocaine back on. Um, I put uh, a video on for them so that I could focus on this. <laughs> um, but anyway, so the, the way that I look at it is that Having a, a priority list allows for the CF to tag themselves as working on something, has allows for things that aren't tagged on that, and the we, uh, we as a community dictate what the actual priority list is, and it allows us to actually say, okay, you know what, the CF isn't take, taking this on, we'll take this on, or I'll take this on, or what have you. And this roadmap is just, it doesn't make sense to me. Like, like how... Um, like how we don't have unlimited resources. We, um, if, if that was the case, I would have everything on day one. So mm. that's just my thought. Yeah, but let me kind of interject uh, here. What so, I like so, so what, what, what's, what's happening? What's happening on the ground, guys, is we don't have this kind of roadmap abstraction. And just as I'm not trying to bust on CF or anything, but let's take stake pool school, for example. You know, maybe the number of stake pools was a KPI. That initiative was launched. It was said, hey, guys, this is what we're doing. Go support it the community supporting it. This isn't being supported by CF. This is us. And we have an influx of inexperienced operators. So now we've got to create the educational materials so they don't get robbed. And two, we've got to create, um, you know, there's just education around keys that's not even there. So we've got this influx in the main net and where there's not a consistency between what's being executed and what needs to be covered up on the back end or covered by on the back end by the community is a problem. And so for priority, I think the number one thing we need to accomplish is a communication channel, bi-directional. That's great that we're getting information coming to us, but if you can't hear from us what's happening on the ground, I mean, now we're in a situation where we're, we're potentially got a lot of stake pool operators that um, are inexperienced and two, we're going to lose a lot of operators that we've trained along the way. And this is just one example of, um, okay, yes, we need a roadmap, but it's so we can tie in what's happening on the ground with what CF is pushing out. We need to be able to move and we need to be able to adapt. And so for first priority, low hanging fruit, that channel's got to get put back in place. We have to have that established because right now we're still working. We're still filling the gaps as a community that the CF isn't doing for us. And so, and that's fine if we talk about compensation, I mean, hey, you know, we're killing ourselves. So it's good to say we need to accomplish these goals, you know, from a high level, but there's things that are happening right now and we can talk about tools all day, but we need solutions right now to help us move forward as we progress through this. I think, I like right, for yeah, example, there's no surveys. Uh, there's, no, there's no surveys, there's no status boards and, uh, the outgoing communication is one way path. I think listening needs to be better, right? I think to summarize, thank you, Kyle, I appreciate it.
So, hi Rick, I would just like to go back to something that uh, Tamara was when she was going through the roadmap. So, I think to facilitate us to point to priorities, couldn't we get like a, someone from the CF to come like in a week or so and say and show, and then we get something from, you know, IOHK and Emergo uh, to show us, say, hey, look guys, that's what we are working on. That's what, where we are at. Obviously, we don't need to, you know, to hear, you know, private things, but like, so they show us and then we take off, we go, well, okay, so that's been work on, that's in our, uh, in our roadmap, so we don't need to worry about that. These guys are working on it and we can check with this person uh, who is doing what. So like we could bring our roadmap, like, you know, a lot smaller and then we could actually say, okay, that's no one's doing this. So then we step in and, 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 and do the work. And then once we have those priorities, then we can use whatever, you know, whatever GitHub or, or whatever people are feel uh, comfortable with. Um, Cause I think if we go, we, we leave this roadmap too broad, uh, we're gonna, you know, kind of overlap work that's been done. And then we go back again to the, what everyone's pointing. Yeah, communication is, is pretty bad at the moment. So it sounds like, there's things that like Kyle you said that we need right now but my question is how much of a lot of this communication may be resolved with the new CEO right because that's the spokesperson for the organization it's not like the chairman of the board or the board is speaking you know so even like you know quarterly quarterly financial calls hold on one sec quarterly financial calls where they go over what we've done what we've spent what our status is of course it's not a for-profit entity but it still is like the mouthpiece. And I hear all these things that Tamara's saying they're doing in Mamit. Um, and we don't have that line of sight in there, but it's still valuable to itemize kind of the wish list and then marry those two things together when the CEO, CFO, if you have one, can kind of figure out, all right, how do we prioritize these into the roadmap? I think that might make more sense now that's <laughs> November timing, but yeah, go ahead, Kyle. It's a, it's, it's a good assessment from a high level, but if that channel's not bi-directional, it's almost as useless. Now, the CEO wanting to do a workshop to, to work with the community, that's all cool and everything. But, you know, if we've got seven council seats, what are we doing with the other two? I almost think the community needs to insert itself into that bureaucracy. But, you know, I don't need to get into all the details of why I think that. But, um, you know, so uh, I think a CEO is great, but unless the CEO has the visibility that we have collectively, you know, probably about 50 guys and gals who are on the front lines who see what's going on and who can adapt with what's going on. And if we have that channel there, then we can ad adapt some kind of, you know, uh, tactical short-term countermeasures uh, as the days go by, because there's always something that's popping up and there's always a change that kind of, and it reverberates and it ripples. So if that visibility is not there two way, I think we're just spinning our wheels. I, I totally agree. Um, with that, and I do, I do want to say that I think the questions we should be asking is how do we want the Cardano Foundation to communicate with us, and how would we like to communicate with them? Because that's what brought us together, and I think that those should be just questions we should be thinking about. And that's what we should ask ourselves, and that should be effectively be our first deliverable to the foundation. Thank you, Danny. Nailed it. And I definitely don't think we should be waiting on a new CEO because you never know how long it's going to take. You never know what you're going to get. So we don't want to wait around on that. Uh, <laughs> Just my take. So here's a crazy question, and maybe this is not possible at all, but the two remaining seats, is it possible to make those electable um, people by the community? I think we should. If, yeah, yes, uh, yes, yes. If it's not possible, I think we should make it possible. And me, Nico, do you want to weigh in here? I'm all in favor, raise your hand. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, on the the award we should have like a you know, in, in reality we shouldn't have like in the long term in the board either Emergo, IOG, you know, we should have independent people uh, moving forward. My understanding is like these guys oh. you're muted. Sorry, someone just called me. That's okay. Sorry. Okay. Yeah, what I was saying is like, uh, you guys came into the board to fill gaps. And I think the long-term idea is to get, you know, 
as more independent as possible from because uh, I see a bit of conflict of interest there if we keep the board you know with uh, IOG and Morgo uh, in there. Are really. you trying to fire me? No, I'm just kidding. Um, oh, no, I, right now. no, no, it's okay. It's <laughs> no, uh, I, no, no, I would no, just, we like just to want to seat at the table. No, that's yeah. totally cool. I, I understand what you're saying too. So Amergo and IOHK, yeah, it was always supposed to be a temporary thing. Of course, I'm there just to make sure I'm managing the transition, right, from IOHK to uh, to the Cardano Foundation. We built it. We built the baby, and now I want to make sure that the Cardano Foundation uh, that I can hand over the baby to the foundation, even though they are just the custodian of Cardano, right, guys? Like it's a decentralized product. They're the custodian of it. They don't own it. Uh, the, the custodian of the product. Uh, so, but, but long term, yeah, a wider discussion needs to happen about what composition should the council comprise of be? Why? Uh, you know, you, in my opinion, the, the council should reflect what the strategy is. You should have people reflecting the interests of the strategy um, and it should be global as well, right? I, I believe that there has to be two Swiss people on it because it's a Swiss foundation. Um, so it has to have to be on the, the council. It's not a board, but it's like a board it's council. Um, but I, it needs to be global. It needs to be representative of the strategy. And these people need to be the best people for anyone Swiss here uh, uh, for, for the role. Um, then there can be other committees inside of the Cardano Foundation as well. The council can create committees. And then there's the management board. So that's where our C-suite sits and the other people, the other contributors underneath the C-suite. Um, so I guess it's, it's something to put on the roadmap, though, is, is what is the composition of the council? What does the council do and why and uh, what sort of roles, skill sets and uh, should a council member have? Um, and what is the day to day like for a council member? It's, again, not always super, super glamorous, but it's a it's a really serious role. And you have a fiduciary responsibility for everything the Cardano Foundation does. And if anybody knows anything about fiduciary responsibilities, it's a big responsibility that you have, you're actually liable for things that the Cardano Foundation does. So it's, it's, uh, you have to take the role very seriously. And um, yes, that's all I'm going to say about that. But let's put it on as an item for discussion. For sure. And, and to Rick's point, don't wait for the CEO. Uh, you know, this person might not work out. I mean, nobody's going to wait, but, um, you know, one of the main jobs of the CEO is this very thing, is to, to, to make sure that we do have a strategy and a consolidated one at that. But yes, I, I take your point there. And yeah, I, but... I actually have to go, folks, and I don't want to cut this short so you guys can keep going, but um, I'm 15 minutes uh, over and I have to leave. But I just wanted to say thank you to all of you, and I hope my input helped. And I'm I'm here uh, every step of the way as well, uh, alongside Manmeet and the other council members. And I hope this is shared and, and other people have inputs on it. Uh, Charles is certainly going to watch as well. He's always got great insight too, just about things more generally. I know Nathan will be watching it and everybody else. So I just wanted to thank you. And Rick, uh, man, you work, hardest working man in Cardano. I'm just kidding, but you're, you're amazing. So thank you, Rick, for all your time on this. I got to go though, but um, thank you guys. Thank you, Tamara. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye. Thanks, Tamara. Yeah. Uh, yeah, uh, I guys. think it's super important Sorry, and ahead. probably, uh, uh, yeah, it should be something that maybe something really good in the roadmap will be to put like highest priority, high priority, and this should be like the highest priority, how the community could be like involved in the Cardano Foundation. And uh, you guys know about like stake pool operators. We were federated. Now uh, uh, the stakeholder operators are going to be like creating like 30% of the blocks. So, and then eventually we are going to be fully decentralized. So uh, maybe uh, we could like work towards like uh, a gradual movement towards this because also like, do we need to solve two times the voting issue? Because uh, how the community is going to vote for who should be there? or to be actually wait for like some of the work that is going to be done in Volter and we could like leverage that to like maybe big community members. So I think it's not like zero to one, but something that definitely should happen because the community should be like represented, but also it's like, what is the right way uh, to pick like the right community members to represent? It looks to me that, you know, we have to have the voting in place before this kind of the thing takes place. Um, because, uh, you know, whoever you, you know, pick or whoever gets that board seat, you know, there is going to be a lot of contention there. 
So uh, if it's put up to vote and uh, voting is clear ahead of time and then people vote, then uh, we have two members. I mean, there, there has to be some sort of a, a laundry list of, of qualifications there. You know, you cannot have somebody who has a criminal record and all these kind of things, of course. So, um, but uh, yeah, it, it, it looks like, you know, we, we do need to have uh, a voting in place. To, to, to uh, um, I, I wanted to ask you guys, you know, I know that this whole council was supposed to be sort of temporary, but, you know, I'm, I'm I, you know, coming from a banking, I know that there's no such thing. It's just, there's no uh, more permanent thing as temporary. Um, so do you guys have any plans right now to actually transition the foundation into a decentralized sort of u- in unit <clears throat> where uh, you will have uh, the, uh, the, the council basically overseeing the, you know, the strategy and, and making sure that, you know, the laws in Switzerland are followed and all that, but the, the actual operations um, basically take place in some sort of a decentralized manner in a sense that, you know, people vote on, on, on priorities and, and people hire, whether it's firms or, uh, you know, other people in order to, to basically execute on, on those uh, decision items. I know that it's, it's probably two or three years down the road, but I think we should start laying the foundations right now. And, and I would like to basically get a sense of that. Uh, right now, like we are already like going towards like the treasury system where we're going to have voting. So that's like already like moving towards that. But also you need to take in consideration that laws in Switzerland needs to be followed. Do they allow to have a decentralized foundation? Do we want a decentralized foundation? Or maybe they actually the foundation should like through time as per se start like having less impact in the community and the treasury and the voting through, uh, through like a decentralized marriage should get like more power because it's actually going to have more money. It's going to be more representative of the community. So maybe we are jumping right to an, a, a result that maybe is not like the right result. Like, oh, let's decentralize the foundation. Do we need to decentralize the foundation if we are going to actually have governance on chain? Yeah, there's areas of responsibility marked on the roadmap. Some things can be decentralized and some things like passing legislation, it's impossible. Well, it's not impossible. It's very difficult to decentralize something like that because you have to have very specific people going and fighting the good fight to get legislation passed, right? You can't just have a bunch of random cats and dogs doing that. But there is a lot of efforts on the roadmap that can be done by volunteers. And I agree with you, Med. I think the most important thing we need uh, earliest on here is a method to vote. For example, let's just say the roadmap stays on a spreadsheet for the next month uh, until we migrate it to a proper collaboration tool. Okay. We still, it, um, in order to remove Rick something the- from there, you, we'd have to have a vote and say, hey, does this stay or go? Or we'd have to assign somebody to be in charge and say, go ahead and clean that up and whatever you end up with is, we're going to go with that. Right. So either way is fine. We either got to vote people into place um, or we got to vote things, uh, priorities up and down. Yes, sir. Sorry. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, no, on that note, um, you know, we're, we're doing an on-chain voting for SPACRA. It's kind of an ad hoc thing we threw together. Um, it potentially could mature into something with a web GUI. Um, but I think uh, if we need to do this before Voltaire, but if that doesn't make sense, then maybe we can find a tool. You know, I think idea scale has voting or something like that. We can kind of implement, but yeah, we need to figure out how we're going to kind of cull some of these ideas or not necessarily cull, but prioritize. And then from there, the stuff that's kind of on the tail end, we can drop into communities and let community leads take the lead on. Thank you for that. Uh, that's good innovation. But I think a barrier, one of the barriers to moving forward is the ability to vote. I call it a barrier because, you know, how else do you prioritize? Does some random guy prioritize it? Or, uh, you know, if you get a vote going, it'll work out. I don't want to get into the details of it. We've got to figure out how do we get a vote? How do we collaborate the tools? I think those are the two critical questions at this point. Um, I think we're almost done. Does anybody have anything to input here? There was one last question, how to manage expectations. I think that becomes self-evident. This is going to take a while. Uh, are there any questions on how to manage expectations? Because we, we should probably wrap this up in a few minutes. We don't want to go on for too long, but I want to make sure everybody has their inputs. Managing. Yeah, sure. Uh, I, I, can, I, I can talk a, a bit, uh, Hick. Uh, for example, uh, Tamara uh, was talking about uh, Glassfrog, the, is the allocracy system. 
And I, I play around a bit with the uh, glass frog and it kind of uh, serve uh, to to solve some uh, some topics that was raised like uh, how to prioritize, how to to retain revision history. That that tool can uh, can be used because uh, it's easy to to create this uh, uh, cycle, cycles in the in the tool and, and put this uh, community that uh, want for example, take uh, a chat about marketing, for example, and uh, other stuff. And, and then we, we use that, uh, that tool to, to, to make meetings and, and push to uh, other tools like um, uh, ideal scale to vote. And, and after that, we, we can uh, prioritize in, uh, things in the roadmap. I think will be at the end will be a combination of tools to uh, where where you can use to to achieve this this goal. All right, thank you, Tiago. I appreciate you evaluating, and I appreciate your time taking a the, the effort to evaluate that glass frog. Uh, I remember you volunteered for that, so. Thank you for those inputs. And I encourage everybody, if you see something in the Telegram channel and the Discord channels that needs action, uh, feel free to jump in just like you did on this call. You know, it was awesome stuff. Um, uh, how, anything else on managing expectations? I think the, some of the things we need to go forward, we need a way to vote. Uh, we need a, a collaboration method put into place. And at some point we need to identify specific uh, specifically, who's going to perform what task, you know, who's going to volunteer to take care of something. Does that sound pretty reasonable? Is there anything I missed right there? Yeah, it um, does. No, I would just like, to, I would just like to add, you know, make sure to engage in the Telegram group and on Discord. There's, you know, groups broken down. So if you guys are in the Telegram group, you can find all the links you want in the pen message. Um, well, I wanted but, to uh, What do we agree on? Is, it's, it's possibly that you know, uh, uh, like custom ID, uh, sorry, uh, UI for um, you know voting and you know uh, setting setting priorities, um, uh, you know, to the roadmap is not. It, it, it's actually a good idea. I uh, I'm I'm not sure what uh, shape the UI for voting or for uh, on on Voltaire is now, but this effort in creating that kind of UI. Uh, could actually be, uh, uh, you know, taken up uh, and integrated into Voltaire itself. Uh, so maybe I know, of obviously, you know, it, it's 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 sizable efforts to 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 develop, but something like that. Um, but something maybe something to consider um, for for a bit longer, um, you know, as as part of the roadmap. Um, uh, because that, that, you know, it would certainly be nice to have. Yeah, it would be. You know, I think there's two takeaways we need to have from this meeting. We need a method to vote. So let's uh, kind of drive that. We also need to parse all of those questions and get those farmed out to the people who need to answer them. Otherwise, people will be dissatisfied with this meeting that nothing was accomplished. And uh, I want to make sure you all keep that energy. because we got massive energy. I'm very proud of you all for doing this. Keep that energy moving forward. So a method to vote, someone needs to be working on, is IdeaScale the right uh, tool, right? I know people say defer the tool. Well, the longer you defer that tool, the longer you tie our hands and we can't get nothing done, right? We're here to get something done. If you don't give us tools, we're gonna make our own tools. And we're, that's how it's gonna work, you know? So give yep. us the tools or we're gonna make the tools, but we're gonna have some tools, right? We're, we're here to get stuff yeah. done. We're not here to talk, we're not here to think. Yep. We're here to do stuff, right? Because could we, we get someone from the <laughs> could we get someone from the CF or, or Nico or Mammy to, to talk to someone from the CF to provide us like a can be very simple like a document say guys this is what we're working on uh, and then we can then come back later and, and evaluate so we can take stuff I, out I, of the I thought out of yeah, the I thought, roadmap. 
I thought tomorrow said that they would do that. And I think that's something we should push for because if we understand what CF is working on, that'll yeah. help us prioritize. Yeah, those are parallel efforts. They can all be done at the same time. Nothing needs to exclude the other. But the one thing I don't want to do is I don't want to have analysis paralysis where people say stuff, right? Anybody can say stuff. You got Twitter, you got Telegram, you got all these things out there where people talk. These people who are here now today are people who do. These are people who do stuff. And we need tools to prioritize and vote. So that needs to be a high priority on the Cardano Foundation Council. Um, now, Tamara said, uh, idea scale, great. Give us idea scale. I don't want to sit around waiting around. Oh, I'm going to wait on a tool. Somebody already figured this out. We're not reinventing the wheel here. Get us the best tool. We have a vote in Telegram. Uh, get us something to vote with. That way we can prioritize. Um, get us something to collaborate with. Those are very high priority items. Does anybody disagree? I agree. If you agree, say you agree. Or raise your hand. I agree. I agree. Yeah, I agree too. I agree. I agree. I agree. I agree. I agree. All right, I think we have concurrence. Thank you, because I don't want to sit around. Oh, look, look, you know, I don't want to wait on a CEO, and I don't want to wait on. Oh, let's figure out if we're going to use Glass Frog or Jira or Trello or blah 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 blah. This isn't hard, folks. You know, you guys know what I'm talking about. Y'all know what I'm talking about. If we take, if we accept the answer, oh, we're going to wait on something, then we're going to be stuck, and we're going to have dissatisfied meetings. And I want these meetings to be productive, and I want to keep moving the ball down the field. The only way we're going for number one is if we get stuff done. And if we accept answers that say, you know, answers that placate, I'm not going to buy it, right? And here's an answer. And we're going to wait on that. I'm sorry. We've waited long enough. We've waited long enough. Cardano's waited long enough. Uh, the development is now moving rapidly. So the software is good to go. The problem we have is the people movement and the communications. And I think those are the core issues. We need a method to vote and prioritize and collaborate. So let's drive that this sorry, week, okay? Rick, Does that second. sound like a plan? Rick, sorry. Yes, Ben, just, sorry, go ahead. Just a quick question. So which tool do you guys want? Let's just go with Jira and idea scale. Let's do the idea scale okay. to get ideas out there and Jira to store the data and build the roadmap. We have, uh, we have good indications on Telegram where I did a preference poll. Does anyone have seen the preference poll? And nobody is really opposed to those tools. Uh, people are in favor of those tools, but nobody completely shot them down. So if you can just go with idea scale, go with Jira, get us something to work on, get logged in, get some work done. That'd be great. Does anybody, does everybody agree or disagree? If you agree, say you agree. Yes, no? Agree. agree. Can we vote like uh, which in those tools or are they just yeah, like I a think poll, there should uh, be a poll. Well, we have a vote in Telegram. It's in oh, the okay. opinion. We right. took a poll. Yeah, yeah. We took a no, poll. No, See, what I mean like a, no, no. What I mean we, is like a, to vote about uh, prioritizing. Can these tools be used to vote or not about like what we prioritize or not? I understand. Does anyone know, can idea scale be used to vote and can Jira be used to vote? Yes or no? I believe idea scale, idea scale can. I think it can too. I looked up a little bit on it. Does anybody know? Does anybody know if idea scale lets you vote? Okay. You, can, you can vote in it. Okay. Sounds great. But, Thank you, Boone. You know, I, so ideal scale is a, a cool, has some cool things, but you know, it will introduce problems of its own. It's not like you get in there and everything makes sense and works like you think it does. So just be aware that we might be opening a new Pandora's box of people trying to use. That's fine. Um, I'd rather have a tool and move forward than get stuck on what tool do we use? Otherwise we'll get caught in the loop. Like for example, yeah. if we don't have a tool to vote, we can't vote to figure out to get a tool to vote and be stuck in a loop. And if we say, Oh, I don't like this tool. That one's too hard. We'll get stuck in a loop. So I just wanted to make that out. So, Thank you, Boone. I appreciate it. Thank you, sir. So I, I I'm thinking that uh, from from my side, I personally, I, I just had an idea. I might actually pull off I like a, a, a quick prototype uh, for that kind of tool of our own. There's a gentleman named Dor. Uh, like, oh, you want to pull off a prototype? Yeah, yeah, like, like, a, like a quick and dirty. Um, uh, so like, yeah, um, uh, uh, for, for, for uh, Voting and prioritizing, uh, prioritizing and voting um, um, on 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 the on the roadmap. 
uh, priorities. Um, I, I think I, I think I can I can uh, uh, pull off uh, something like that. Um, yeah. That is fantastic, Jared. All in favor of Jared, go ahead and do that. Say aye. Yep, I'm in favor of it. As long as we do cool. the other yeah, thing yeah. as well. We really yeah, shouldn't just throw away the idea of electing two board members from the community because Tamara kept talking about representation from different locations. Well, what about representation from the community? Because I feel like we currently don't have that. Yeah, I agree, Peyton. We'll get back to that subject. Let's wrap up the idea scale, then we'll touch on that one because that is also very important. All right, so we're all good with uh, Jared's going to take care of getting Jared's going to take care of getting us some idea scale examples. We also have Dora Garbosh who's going to. Uh, introduce idea scale on Wednesday. There is a link and I'll make sure I get that into the telegram uh, where he's doing it for the the new C fund thing and he's going to introduce idea scale, but I don't want to wait on that. If Jared, if you take care of that, thank you very much, sir. I appreciate you volunteering to do that. Uh, and we can go on to Peyton's question that we're going to wrap up. Is there any other questions on what we're going to do moving forward? We're, we're going to look at idea scale and so on. Any questions? Let's hit on what Peyton just said. What about a community representation on the board? Now, the prob here's something to think about with teams. Teams are effective in sizes of about five to seven people. Uh, if they get too big, they become stale. They start to, they, they get bogged down with churn, right? Uh, so you wanna have an effective team size, but you also wanna have community representation on the council, right? And you also gotta keep in mind that Tamara said they are fiduciary responsible for stuff. So you can't just pick any random Joe in a community. Uh, for example, you can't be anonymous. You're going to have to be, you know, line item accountable for what happens. So what do you guys think about what Pei just said there? Uh, you want community representation on the board? Yes or no? Yes? 100%. Yes. Yes. And yes. I think it, uh, I think it yes. fixes the visibility problem too, because that's one of the main issues is visibility. And, and you can just run for the position, like you, understanding all of the actual requirements, um, you know, and then vote it in and then also terms or um, potential of revoting. So if they're not doing their job. You want the ability to recall. That's very important. That sounds good. Pay, hey, does that address uh, the question there? Did we get that okay? Uh, we yeah, should have. Sure, I really appreciate it. You bet, sir. Thank you. Thank you for that. All right. If there's nothing else, I think we're approaching time to wrap up. Are there any, oh, by the ways or oh, gotchas that we can hit on very briefly and then we'll call it a day. I hope this felt productive. Anything else, guys, gals, ladies, gents? I want to say one quick thing about, I had comments on the CEO. I definitely don't think we should wait for the CEO, so I don't want to be misconstrued on that, but we will need to reckon with when that person comes in, they're placed by the board, they will set priorities. Right. So we definitely need representation of the community on the board, but the board isn't micromanaging that CEO every day. So we just need to figure out what all the stuff that we're doing and our wants and how to mesh those two together at some point, because that person comes in, that's their mandate. Um, so I just wanted to clear up what I said before. I'm not advocating that we do nothing and just wait for someone to swoop in and save the day. So. Thank you, Dave. Uh, right. Something uh, I agree with everything that you guys said, but uh, some things that uh, also we need to think about is, for example, we pick someone from the community and it's on the board. How do make, we make sure that this person is like taking decisions that the community wants, and is not like this person? Oh, now I got a representation and I put like my thoughts on that. So uh, it needs to be something well thought because also uh, there is like. Uh, I know we need to comply with ESA, we if they're proper and we cannot look like uh, something that we are just like a revolving door that we want to be changing people. We definitely need someone from the community and we go towards that, but we should do it gradually. So we make sure that we are doing everything properly and we are like including the community and it's not something that maybe, oh, what 5% of the community pick a representative and then that representative went in on their own. So. Uh, it's like different topics that we need to discuss, but uh, we should always try to continue to move forward. And yeah, uh, great work, guys. Is it is it possible to have the the votes be public? Is that a against the law in mm -hmm. Switzerland or some of that sort? So we can actually see how everybody voted on all, all the topics in the meetings. 
Uh, I don't you, know because I'm not a lawyer. Uh, that question should be probably for Nathan. I vote for Rick to be on the council. We should put Rick on the council. I think he's going to represent uh, the community's, uh, the community's uh, wishes in a very, very good way. Yeah, uh, that's great, but you guys should focus in the process so all the community could talk and not like just voting in a Zoom call because that's not helping, but right, like going towards a process where all the community could vote and be representative. I don't want to be mean, but I want to con keep always things on track. And yeah, I want to be fair. That's that's completely understandable. I think it's why also can't the important. community go ahead? Sorry, go ahead. I'm sorry. So why can't the community vote on the ambassadors and then just use the ambassadors as the people that could go up to the board? Like if the community took over the ambassador program, wouldn't that give us a solid pool to choose from? Because then they have um, to prove themselves. No like ambassadors. Car ambassadors currently have no power at all. Well, what I mean is if the community takes over the control of electing the ambassadors, use that as like the trial run that eventually when the voting for the board comes up, be like, here's a pool that you could choose from. So hire, hire from within kind of. I, yeah, I agree. But the problem with picking from the ambassadors is there's a very limited scope of, of uh, skills, you know, content creators, moderators, translators, stuff like that. And what they need over on the Cardano Foundation or on, on the council is program managers, um, executive level skills, communication skills, leadership skills, uh, and stuff like that. Like, I appreciate no central authority. I appreciate you saying something, but uh, it, it's gotta be looked at, you know, what do they bring to the table so that they can get that information back to community? So you would have to expand the scope of the ambassador program to include any talent. And it wouldn't be limited to four stovepipes of talent right now. So you'd have to broaden the scale. So I don't want to put the ambassador program between the community and putting someone on that council. I think it uh, may be a more general vote. That's just my take on it. Um, when, or, or you would expand the ambassador program to include uh, all talent. Vice I agree with you completely, Rick. I think it also, I mean, there's, there's and the ambassadors two, right now have no power. So yeah. Two spots. So why wouldn't the, why couldn't the community have community have two spots on there? And then also, I think it's very important that, while we're identifying what these, uh, you know, their roles are to talk about how these two or one representatives on the council also are getting their feedback from a community like this we're in right now, right? So I think that, you know, we need to make sure that whoever is elected knows that they're, they're going to come to the council with ideas they've gathered from a community like this, not just their own ideas. Yeah hired from the community working by by the, by the community for the community basically but well, that's the risk of every every election we have like uh, you never when you vote someone you know like you say you agree what they say pre and then you know and then when they they taking decisions they are on their own pretty much and that's the risk of voting like a democracy is like that so yeah but um, but you could have should be worrying too too much about like I think we should be worrying a lot before voting and then once it's voting, you know, like uh, you just need to hope that person is going to represent your ideas. Well, yeah, you, I mean, it, you, it's, could, it's, you could make rules that the people who are elected from the community actually have monthly town halls with the community. So when we elect the president of the United States, he doesn't come and ask me my opinion or, or even favor my opinion, but I think our community elected members should have in their contract that they are going to meet with the community to get their what they're bringing to the council so like all right thank you, you for that like guys a... guys what i'd like to sorry, do is sorry, say really yeah this is great detailed discussion what i think we should do is say let's uh branch off a working group saying how do you vote people onto the council and then you can go through the detail in te in a telegram or a discord channel and then bring that to the next meeting after people process it and figure it out and that way we don't uh go through all the detail here but from what i'm gathering so far is you want community representation on the council and the questions are how do we do it what are they responsible for and so on and so if someone wants to brainstorm a list that'd be great are you guys okay with that and then we can wrap up the meeting i don't want to rush it but if this goes on yeah. too long, it'll kind of, it, yep. that'll keep happening. Hey, Rick, I, if, if we're, if we're, if we're going to do the same thing for, you know, P 
people who want to champion different parts of the roadmap. We could be, you know, it, it's kind of the same thing. So it's like, how do we get those people elected to actually take ownership of that also? Um, I, I think that's important to, to have like people who would be, you know, the in charge of, of certain sections of that. Roadmap. We cannot we cannot put them in charge. They should they should they should take the opportunity and rise to the to the challenge, and then whoever is participating and doing the actual work should be voted uh, the vote of confidence to deal with that part of the roadmap. We yeah, I'm not. Just... I'm 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 saying that you know you 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 pick uh, among people who are interested. You're not gonna just pick random people there. Um, so, but we need a voting mechanism to to basically delegate. Their, uh, you know, 600 people, they need to delegate their, you know, voices to somebody. So some section lead, yeah, that, that, that's something like that, you know, so we could offer people or people can nominate themselves and then we can vote. Uh, Rick, well, you're, you're, you're uh, sure. make uh, music. No, you had, sorry about that. I was muted. Thank you guys. Yeah. Um, yeah, you it's right. Again, we're back to the same roadblock you need a method of voting right so yeah. that's definitely a must thank you for that you met a section lead that's why i brought that up uh as you were saying that yeah yeah so uh, yes there are people that have uh stepped up for section leads if somebody wants to be the section lead on that and i agree with no central authority is someone just rise to the occasion and start doing it right just that's that's who we are we're just a bunch of people doing stuff right we'll figure out who's who later on once we get some work done, but I think we're good. Thanks. I'm getting thumbs up. Raymond. Okay. All right. Everyone, are you guys happy with yeah, what we got? Good. We're going to wrap it up. You good? Thumbs yes. up. Oh, good. good. Y'all fired up. Let's roll. All right. Let's rock and roll. Let's punch out. I'm going to get this video uploaded. It's going to be creative commons. Feel free to download it, parse it, do whatever you want with it. Y'all have a great day. Thank you for being here. Thank you for participating. And I uh, look forward, we'll have another meeting in about a week. Uh, I'll keep you posted in Telegram and on Discord. Thanks, Rick. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Rick. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Bye.